What Dylan Dennis is doing to Nina Agdahl has me fired up. Philip DeFranco was like, we need to censor this girl's tweets on screen. Well, you saw a number of Dylan supporters and people who just hate Logan Paul cheering that on. You also saw a number of people just absolutely horrified, saying things like, Dylan Dennis is fucking disgusting. This shit isn't funny or some pre-fight nonsense. He's gone way past the point of too far. He's and in case you don't know who these people are, I'll catch you up. But if you do already know, and you find those names at all off-putting, look, I get it. Simultaneously, there is a lot to learn from this situation, so I encourage you to look at it through the lens of digital footprints, the attention economy, and creators slash influencers further merging with traditional entertainment. The internet's fucking crazy. Like, it just get like, yeah. have you noticed it's even gotten crazier and crazier now? I just, yeah, I, th I think, I guess, for the crossing of these, like, influencer things. One last preface is that the Paul brothers and Dylan's audiences are predominantly male, and the conversation around Nina's digital footprint is almost entirely amongst a hive mind of guys right now. So I encourage more girls to tune in if you've been attentive to someone like Taylor Swift's messaging over the years. If I could talk to my 19 year old self, I'd just say, hey, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna date just like a normal 20 something should be allowed to, but you're going to be a national lightning rod for slut shaming. You'll find this important. Let's get into it. To set the stage, Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul are set to fight in October alongside KSI and Tom and Fury. While y'all do that, can we get a zoom in on the cake? Dylan, you see it? I don't know the world of fighting, so per Google, Dylan Dennis, 30, is a mixed martial arts fighter and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. He's known for his association with UFC champion Conor McGregor, who hired Dylan to be his grappling partner in 2016. Basically, Dylan is recognized as one of the best fighters in the world. His last fight was back in 2019, which he had won. Controversy-wise, he's been linked to NFT slash crypto scams, amongst other things, but his most notable controversy might be what's happening right now. So, hang tight. On the other hand, Logan Paul has grown to become one of the most well-known internet personalities. He and his younger brother Jake Paul initially grew on Vine, then moving to YouTube to do vlogs, comedy skits, pranks, music videos, and so on. Today he has a podcast called Impulsive, he signed with the WWE, and owns a stake in Prime Hydration alongside KSI. In the past, Logan fought KSI twice, who is also a YouTube creator, one being a draw, the other being loss, and he also fought Floyd Mayweather, which was a draw. Controversy-wise, there was the trigger warning suicide forest vlog back in 2017, where he saw a man's body and was shocked, but also made jokes, his crypto zoo NFT scam, and most recently, Senator Schumer urging the FDA to investigate Prime because the drink may not be safe for its current core demographic, minors. But that's to be determined. In terms of history between the two. The thing with Logan, though, is that him, Logan and Jake, we've been going at it for so long. Dylan was supposed to fight Logan's brother Jake in 2021, but after an injury on Dylan's end, it fell through. During that time, the notable back and forth, and let me note that I hate talking about this stuff, but unfortunately it is important context, was Jake claiming that Dylan randomly got a girl pregnant and also claiming to have previously hooked up with Dylan's girlfriend at the time. I can't find information anywhere on if Jake's claims were true or bullshit, which irks me because I don't want to restate these claims and not confirm the truth, but again, important context to the current situation. Additionally, Dylan was supposed to fight KSI, aka Logan's business partner, back in January, but withdrew 10 days before the event. During that time, the notable back and forth was that KSI went on my mom and like all this shit like by saying, I pray your mom gets to see me knock you out in person. So the takeaway from those situations are people are skeptical that Dylan will show up to the fight and there is a pattern of unnecessarily bringing third parties into promotion. Now let's get into the current situation. Nina Agdahl, 31, is a supermodel who has worked with the likes of Victoria's Secret and Sports Illustrated. She is also Logan's fiance as of July after dating for just over a year. Since the fight was announced back on August 8th, she's basically become Dylan's sole target on social media as he continues to post pictures of her and past partners, any pictures of her next to a man that he comes across, photoshopped images, previous nude modeling work, and so on. Though he shared well over 100 posts of her at this point, many being with the same partners, he recently tweeted, I actually have the most insane picture of Nina to ever exist, but I can't share it or the event will be canceled 10,000%. If I drop this pic, it would end the fight and his engagement, and I might even find myself in jail. This picture is like a nuclear bomb. The damage it would do would be irreparable. 
I'll text a picture to Aiden Rouse live on stream so you guys can see his reaction when we do our interview. Do you yeah. feel bad for her? Do you think it's like, like, how do you think it's affecting her? Or you just don't give a shit? I'm pretty savage. I don't know. I yeah, mean, you were ruthless. Bro. But but Jake did this to me. It's a double-edged sword. Like, you can't talk all that shit and not be able to take it. That's the worst kind of person. What Jake did was slash is fucked simultaneously. I don't, I don't know. I guess no one's really taken it to that level. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, this is definitely a new level. There's been countless text-based digital footprint takedown attempts that I've seen. But this is, first of all, one of the more visual ones I've seen. And second of all, the most extensive curation-wise from over the years. Previously, Nina and Logan's relationship has been very offline. They recently talked about why, and the reason is an unfortunate parallel to what Dylan is provoking. I've been so intentional about keeping things between us, between us. You are not an internet piece of clickbait for me. You're my everything babe i fucking love you so much I love you. and so i don't i don't want to drag you into this shit storm sorry guys <laughs> watching but it's a fucking hellhole online <laughs> For uh, sure. and it is what you make it and you it have to ha be. have iron skin dude we posted our our first picture together like oh like girlfriend <laughs> six month oh anniversary and the, the the comments are just scathing just being mean to nina just i've never been bullied my entire <laughs> life and, and, i don't and, know how but this was my first bullying experience and like it is just not okay and look logan can easily handle this shit i've been through the fucking social ringer i've seen it all i've heard all the insults some moron troll posting some bullshit on twitter will never phase me ever like i'm so i'm so numb to this shit, which is like partially sad but i've just seen it all i've been through it all i've heard everything everyone's gonna say you got, you got remember we've been doing this for a lot of years, man. Yeah, over been, a decade, yeah, professionally. Yeah. So, like, we've been we, we heard through it. a lot. We've seen yeah. it. And hopefully they'll be fine, and his numbness to internet attacks can empower her to quickly adapt and be somewhat unfazed, because, like Logan said, fully viscerally understand that it always passes. Social media is this weird virtual world that if you want to be immersed in it and be swiping all day and mm. choose to suffocate your mind and mindless content you can but also you can just put it down and be an actual human yeah we all know at this point the internet moves on so fucking quickly but still do you point. think that you actually haven't taken it too far no everything's public it's not like i'm getting her ex-boyfriends to send me pictures of her in bed that would be pretty fucked up i would imagine right that would be a, a different kind of level there's she's public shit that she can't handle that she used it in her past that's not my problem it's important we critique how dylan is trying to justify this because I don't think we should just throw our hands up and be like, this is just how it's going to be when a lot of our lives are online. Like, the situation isn't one that only the fiancé of one of today's biggest entertainers will experience. Not even close. Over the coming years, decades, on personal and or public scales, there will be aspects of digital footprints that will tempt us to dwell on our past. Our lifestyle, our beliefs, our interactions, our relationships, the wide range of trials and errors that come with being alive. And it's mind games, like, and, and fighting. There's three ways to beat someone psychologically. Big word. Mentally. Same thing. I was saying you could beat a man through his, like, physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know? And that's that's the art of war, you know, Sanzu. And uh, this guy reads books. I mean, yeah, it can be this mental warfare that prevents you from forgiving and forgetting your past self and just moving the fuck on. And even if you want to, it could be other people prompting that, just pulling from that footprint, trying to make you dwell and push you down, like Dylan is doing to Nina. Something I also want to add in terms of what's technologically possible right now, there are platforms that allow people to upload images of anyone and AI facial recognition is utilized to find any and all photos, videos of them across the internet. So of course, what comes into play here are things that other people posted of you that you didn't even realize or didn't even remember because you've been online so long. Maybe you've posted and deleted something, but other people have extracted those posts before you deleted them and put them elsewhere. These types of things. I think this technology is just important to be aware of. I don't want to show the name of the company because I don't know like their intent and I don't want to be promoting this company to anyone. A few weeks ago, I came across this really interesting clip that's somewhat related. Do you know that sometimes I get a little jealous when you look at old pictures of me? Really? Like you? Even you though want... it's still me, I'm like, don't look at me pre-pregnancy right now. Really? Interesting. <laughs> I think it's just fun to like- I feel like you're cheating on current me with what? past me. That is wild. 
I feel like you're cheating on current me with past me. All because of the thoughts that can stem from a photo or video. Dylan is trying to create a similar sense of insecurity in Logan's relationship. Trying to make him feel like Nina isn't solely his partner. Even though she can be completely mentally removed from that past. Like maybe she barely even remembers it. Still, Dylan will not stop replaying it for the public. A related quote, Unclear if the human mind is ready even now for the photograph. Certainly not the database. Infinite recall and simulation are coming next. That will be a problem. The timelines really are super recent for humanity. We began owning cameras in the early 1900s. Camcorders became more widely owned in the late 1900s. Over the past two decades, what we document has like 100x, if not more, as the relationship between photo, video, and the internet has come into play. Of course, in tandem with Cameron as being so much more accessible in our hands via a smartphone. Something I've considered recently about media that has me like, holy shit, is let's say you agreed to do one of those weird ass TLC segments back in the early 2000s. Thinking it airs once or maybe a few times here and there, but then it's dead. Never to be seen by the public again. Like that's the media landscape you agreed to and that's all it was at the time. That's all you perceived. But then all the cable companies start to roll out DVR aka the ability for people to record shows onto their TVs. Mm, definitely different, but there's only so much storage, so people will have to delete the recordings eventually. But then, the immense rise of streaming services, YouTube, phone screen recordings, TikTok clips. It's like, that is such a shift. And that permanence, especially publicly, is not something you anticipated or could even comprehend at the time that you opted in. Anyway. Well, yeah, she can't be happy. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, why would she lines. be? Why well, would well, she be? Well, well, I didn't go anything about race. I didn't go anything about, like, anything. It is true. You are just reposting what's on the internet. But, exactly. I mean, I would, if I was Logan, I would be absolutely furious. He crossed lines. Yes, we have an established moral use cases, boundaries, and all the social dynamics that come with interacting with digital footprints. And I can already hear the critiques that she should have known the internet is forever. Or the age-old tale of don't put anything online that you wouldn't want your employer to see. But like, get real. We all know we've broken that rule at this point. If you didn't publicly, you definitely have privately in DMs with your friends or something of the sort. And we also know that our relationship with the digital world has become far more intimate than just an employable depiction of us. People forget a um, digital footprint. And like, if you're commenting hate on something there's, and you're posting on TikTok, there's a huge possibility you can go viral and get famous. Yeah. And then... People are going to find the mean yeah. things you said. Because that's happened a bunch of times where someone gets starts getting followers and they're like, oh wait, they talked so bad about this person or yeah. posted this video. While those sentiments are important considerations, taking the trial and error out of expression online would be shitty. So to me, what Dylan is doing is harassment and it's like sinister. You just are not afraid to like not only cross the boundary, but yeah. like fucking hop over the boundary and like run fucking 100 miles what, past it i kind of even with connor we just go with like the truth is what sells while there are elements of truth depicted aside from a plethora of false framing as well he's also manipulating her current reality again trying to force her her partner and the internet to dwell what's also shitty is that so many of the photos he's sharing are paparazzi photos so ones that nina did not consent to being taken or posted which is one of the various reasons that civilian-induced surveillance capitalism can be harmful. She's one of those girls that's been in New York and dated over, like, I was getting DMs from, like, guys that, like, were, like, with her, like, just random, like, catch dudes. But like, every girl's promoters. like that, no? Or Are not. you going to wipe them up? I don't know, maybe. I'm just piecing together the Taylor Swift compilation in my head right now. When I was, like, 23 and people were just, like, kind of reducing me to, like kind of making slideshows of like my dating life and putting people in there that I'd sat next to at a party once. So let's show some pictures, all right? <laughs> all right, let's We don't... didn't date. Okay. okay. We didn't, didn't date. date. They're saying I'm dating too much in my 20s? Okay, I'll stop. I'll just be single for years. <laughs> now they're saying my album Red is filled with too many breakup songs? Okay. Um, Okay, I'll make one about moving to New York and deciding that really my life is more fun with just my friends. There is no such thing as a slut. There is no such thing as a bitch. There is no such thing as someone who's bossy. There's just a boss. Toss it out, reject it, and resist it. Also, I hate to get into this. Hate, 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 but I have to. <laughs> are, you in the, are you in like triple digits yet? I'm at like 50. Uh, I shouldn't say this because I'm not going to get a girl 50? again. 50? 
1500. Oh. If someone so adamantly talks down the culture of a topic that they directly play into, textbook contradiction, no reason to take them seriously. Basically, my takeaway is in the same way I've mentioned that we need to maintain a level of skepticism towards those who record and post people without their consent, rather than solely those people being posted, we need to maintain a level of skepticism towards those who are capitalizing on or exploiting people's digital footprints rather than solely the people with that digital footprint. Because as we know, the internet hive mind doesn't reflect on or question much and just easily succumbs to someone's downfall for their entertainment, which is weak as fuck. But before we close out, it'd be odd not to mention that Dylan has brought a lot of attention to this fight and it's gonna sell tickets. You gotta sell the fight. I bring the I bring the entertainment. I mean, like I think anybody's talking about this fight because of me, to be honest, it's sure. going viral every single thing I post. But with the TikTokification of everything, it's important we think about this new realm of public discourse we've entered. I think with TikTok now and clipping, yeah, that's just like made everything even worse now. Beef is just, there's so much beef it's now. So much it's so beef. easy to go viral. But it makes everything go so, and that's the thing too. Everything. And I told this at Misfits, like these guys will suckle punch me from behind just to go viral on TikTok. And you gotta be careful with girls too now. Like they'll just go out with you just to kind of like- Get shit. Yeah, get shit or just like listen to you talk and then go the next day and be like, oh, like he was telling me this, that. One that thrives on a lack of privacy and new levels of extremes in order to differentiate yourself amongst the growing normalcy of virality. So with all this temptation to indulge in shock factor tactics, there's a constant battle to maintain integrity. So you're telling me that wouldn't do huge numbers. Me and Logan on the podcast, it would security in between. Of course it would. Of it, course it, it like would. why wouldn't he want to do that? Because I think you've just taken it too far now. No, I think there's also the- So what is he going to do? Shoot me? I think the whole point is he's like, yo, I built this show. I have a great following. Why do I want to give this guy that would that, be his type big, of that would do his biggest numbers, I think, bigger than the 6 9 podcast. But don't he you think there's part care. of it's like, yo, I don't, I don't think he cares really... about big numbers after. You posted, that's what he wants. You posted nudes of his girl, bro. But what goes around comes around. You can't hide from the powers that be. So try not to be jackasses on the internet. Be reasonable about your scrutiny of other people's digital footprint. And if your digital footprint is ever used against you, you'll be fine. Acknowledge what you need to acknowledge. Learn what you need to learn. No one's going to be happy from that acknowledgement or learning, but you just got to keep moving forward. Um, yeah. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.